Building a gaming PC is about commitment. It's about careful part selection, comparing benchmarks and prices to get the best possible performance for your money. It's about optimal cooling, aesthetically pleasing industrial design and tasteful application of RGB lighting. Sometimes building a PC can be a true labour of love for the PC enthusiast. Sometimes it's just about slapping a GTX 1650 into a pre-built. A while back, in a review which featured a particularly cringeworthy impression of Clint at LGR, I mentioned that the GTX 1050 Ti was no longer the most powerful graphics card for the lazy PC gamer. The honour of the card that gives the best performance while simultaneously requiring the least effort and knowledge to install now belongs to the GTX 1650, a Turing-based series of cards with quite a wide range of available specs. Those include older variants with GDDR5 memory and later models with the faster GDDR6. Crucially, for our purposes today, several models do not require external power. While the Gigabyte Mini ITX card I have here is one of those models, it should be mentioned that not all GTX 1650s are made equal in this regard, and if you're intending purchasing a 1650 for use in a PC without external power connectors, you should check up on Tech Power Up or somewhere similar before purchasing. The GTX 1650 received a bit of a critical hammering on its release. Back then, when people could actually buy graphics cards, it was compared unfavourably against cards intended for enthusiast-grade PCs, Next to the older but more potent GTX 1060 and RX 570, the 1650 didn't look like a good buy back in 2019, and even the jump to GDDR6 memory did little to improve matters. In the scalper pandemic, however, beggars can't be choosers, and for many people, the idea of a simple drop-in GPU upgrade could make the whole PC gaming thing seem a bit less intimidating. I'll be testing it out in my RPG PC, or reasonably priced gaming PC, to see just how it compares against some popular titles in 2021. Running Watch Dogs Legion at 1080 with medium settings squeezes us in just under the 4GB VRAM limit and provides a decent average FPS of 57 and 1% lows of 42. There's plenty of CPU power left to spare here, so climbing up to 60 should be possible with some reduced settings. For Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I also chose 1080 medium though I customised the quality a little by turning on screen space reflections. Without them I saw 51 FPS average and 32 FPS lows, and with them switched on, the average drops just 2 frames to 49 and lows to 31. For a change, I thought I'd try Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080 medium, or original as the game calls it. This saw a pretty decent average FPS of 52 and lows of 46. I found this very playable, but there's room to drop settings if you're looking for a 60 FPS experience. Depending on your preference, Cyberpunk 2077 can be a pretty reasonable 1080-30 experience at low settings, averaging 38 and not dropping much below 26. Alternatively, 720 low doesn't quite deliver a 60fps experience, averaging about 58 with 1% lows of 32.
Resident Evil Village's settings menu is frankly a bit of a nightmare in its own right, and if one were to look too carefully at the VRAM warning, you might think you'd need to be at some pretty low settings to get a good experience. However, the recommended settings gave me a 93 FPS average, so I felt free to push up to balanced and got a very respectable 77 FPS. I'm aware that later stages are a bit more demanding, so I'd recommend against going too high here. Apex Legends is a bit less demanding on GPUs, as one might expect for an esports type title. At 1080 high, with textures set to an appropriate level for a 4GB GPU, I saw an average of 70 FPS and lows of 41. I'd call this pretty acceptable, but I think it shouldn't take much to get 100 FPS without making too much of a sacrifice in quality. Forza Horizon 4 won't go much above 120 FPS on the Ryzen 3 3100 we have in this PC. If you're content running at 1080 high, this card can provide you with over 100 FPS averages and 87 FPS minimums. I'm of the opinion that medium looks almost identical to high, but it also won't gain you more than a couple of frames either. Enlisted is a Battlefield-style large-scale multiplayer FPS set in World War II and is still in development as I write this, so performance is likely to change over time, but for the moment it runs quite nicely on the GTX 1650. 1080 medium gives close to 90 FPS averages and over 50 FPS lows. As we're not CPU limited here, I'm sure anyone looking to guarantee 60 FPS could drop quality or resolution to get there. Doom Eternal scrapes under the 4GB VRAM limit at 1080 high settings and returns a quite excellent 81 FPS average. Even 1% lows stick above 60, even in some of the more hectic scenes, so a GTX 1650 should be considered an excellent option for this game. Onto my own personal hell, Warzone at 1080 lowest settings returns 70 FPS average and 52 FPS 1% lows. This was benchmarked in a number of different areas on the map, though I didn't spend much time around Fake Otomi Plaza, so I can't attest to how much of an impact that will have on frame rates. Finally, Fortnite can give a pretty decent high frame rate experience at 1080 competitive settings, averaging 175 and dropping only as low as 120. Pushing things up high and leaving view distance at epic sees averages still over 60 FPS and 1% lows in the middle 30s. Those frame time spikes can't necessarily be attributed to the graphics card of course, as Fortnite is becoming somewhat notorious for its performance issues. In normal days, standard device on the GTX 1650 is that a 1060 or RX 480 with a new power supply might make for a better value upgrade option for someone with a pre-built PC. And sure enough, if it had been a choice between spending the £150 SRP on this or £100 on a used 4GB RX 480 and £50 on a decent power supply, then the latter is clearly the more prudent option. If on the other hand you are upgrading a pre-built and the idea of replacing a power supply fills you with mortal dread, or you happen to be living through the scalper pandemic and prices are just numbers in a whirling tornado of despair, a GTX 1650 might be just the right card for you. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.